Atlantis now comes home to the Kennedy Space Center for the final time in 25 years. What are your main memories of the shuttle on the space station? My uh, favorite by far is looking out of this room, if you will, that we call the cupola. It is a seven windowed observation deck that hangs on the bottom of space station. And you can mm -hmm. fit two or three people oh, in yeah. it comfortably. And uh, the bottom window looks straight down at Earth. And in the past, we didn't have a cupola. All we had was windows. Some of them were quite nice. They're like portholes. Like portholes. Yeah. But you could only see a small arc of the edge of the Earth. Spectacular views. But now you can look down or you can stick your head down inside this cupola. And when you look around in all directions, you can see the horizon of Earth and you get this distinct feeling of Earth being a ball floating in blackness. Yes, yes. It is, yeah. It's physical, tangible, and it's right there, the whole thing. What about the sky? Okay, looking the other way, you're yes. saying, looking, no, we don't have that yet. In fact, we were talking about um, trying to persuade our management to get the engineering model of the cupola, which is down in uh, Building 9 in mm -hmm. JSC, and kitting that up and sticking that on top of station where we make a pretty good observatory. But I, I think they're going to ask us for the bill <laughs> if, if, <laughs> if that ever happens. What was your favorite moment in space? Um, well, the favorite thing I like to do in space is spacewalk. And, you know, I did those on my previous missions and uh, didn't get to do it this time. But that's a lot of fun for anybody who gets the opportunity. There's the thing to look forward to is to climb around on the outside of a spaceship with tremendous scenery, see the whole world floating by you and just to be able to move around outside this big structure using your fingertips. That's good. Uh, this time, though, I got to work the um, big robotic arm yeah. on, the, on the space station, which is a, a tricky little beast. Uh, they took a long time to train me, partly probably because it was me, but uh, many pitfalls in, in operating that. And it's very satisfying to finally be able to do that in space and uh, see it actually work out. Beautiful instrument. You could, it works like a big crane. You can go and pick up things, move them around yeah. the outside of the station. Something that we have not mentioned yet mm -hmm. is just simply living in zero gravity. There are many aspects of daily life that you would be surprised at. Uh, obviously, fluid doesn't stay in a cup, so everything you drink comes out of a bag with a straw. Uh, but simply moving something. If you were to say, can I see your watch? I could just hold it and just push it towards you and it would go in a very straight line, and yeah. you could just grab it out of the air. And I think that little elegant beauty of that situation never gets old. And you get good at it after a while. It's, uh, you know, if you're working on something, you can put a tool there, and as long as you keep it in the corner of your eye, it'll just stay yeah. there while you're working on something, and then grab it and, and use it again. It, it can be a lot of fun, very so satisfying. You trained, of course, on the special gravity plane, didn't you? Yes, I did. Uh, I used to work on that uh, years ago, probably flew on that three, 300 times or so. That is similar to living in space, but a lot different too, because you're going from zero gravity at the top of the parabola, the flight path, to two Gs at the bottom, twice your weight. And that cyclical repetition usually results in people getting sick. I have felt zero gravity for about 30 seconds, but not intentionally. <laughs> <laughs> really? It's, it's all added up. <laughs> You see some really extraordinary things from, from the vantage point of the space station or the shuttle. One thing I remember seeing is moonrise and moonset uh, for up the Earth. It's, it's uh, incredible to see the moon just lift up quite quickly through the atmosphere above the Earth's limb and then move up through the sky. It's, it's going fast enough, we're going fast enough, so you can actually see the moon moving. Same with sunrises, you can see as the sun comes bursting up really above the Earth's limb and you can track it across the sky and all the shadows on space station move, you can watch them move. So you really get a sensation of that you are in the solar system, there's the Earth going around the sun, and you're going around the planet, and it all kind of makes sense. If you move to a different location here on Earth, move to a new town, mm -hmm. it takes you a little while to learn the town and where things are. You can actually get that sense in space. When you first go up there, you look down at the planet and you don't know what you're looking at, it's hard to say. You have to go find a computer to tell you where you are over the Earth. However, through repetition, you learn that uh, that green aurora over there always happens near the South Pole in this month. And when the ground looks sandy, you're over Africa. When you can see nothing but water, you're probably over the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> when you look down and you see a lot of grass 
brown grass in particular, you're over Canada or right. North America. When you see beautiful mountains, it's either the Himalayas or the Andes. And you kind of get that sensation that the whole earth is your neighborhood. And it's smaller than you think. It is the earth smaller, is smaller than, you than, think. than you think. You can, uh, from up there, you can see individual fields, uh, towns easily. The towns are quite big and visible, and uh, bridges and structures like that. But at the same time, you're going around the whole world yes. in 100, 100 minutes. So it's, it's not a very big planet. No, it really not. isn't. What about the shuttle in general? The space shuttle is an elegant, beautiful machine. Uh, one of the most striking visual thoughts I have when I think of space shuttle is what it is like when it's up in space on space station. Space station is enormous, but it's a very angular machine looking beast from the outside. But then when you're in the cupola, for example, looking back at Atlantis or any one of the space shuttles, you see this beautiful curved mm -hmm. airplane. And it's an airplane mm -hmm. that is up there in space attached to the space station. And I'm not sure we're ever gonna see that again. So we were forced enough to fly Atlantis home on this flight which uh, we call the first last flight of Atlantis because we're not sure if she'll fly again. Um, but when you think about what Atlantis has done in her career, oh, yes. 32 flights into space. So almost 200 million miles. Uh, 240, was that right? Something, I can't remember. Yeah, yeah. A ridiculous amount of miles flown. Yeah. It went to the Mir space station seven times, I believe. It mm -hmm. launched Galileo, mm -hmm. yes. uh, Magellan, Hubble. serviced, serviced Hubble. Uh, the list goes on and on of the feats that this machine has done. It's remarkable. What about this change of plans that Mr. Obama has organized? Well, uh, I think things are in a state of flux right now. Mm -hmm. the, it's, uh, there are many players involved in trying to determine the future of the United States manned space program. Right now, shuttle's coming to an end uh, sometime next year. And there may be an extra flight, maybe not. But in any case, the shuttle program will be finishing for good. Uh, there'll be a gap. Um, before we have any manned spacecraft online in yes. the US. It's not clear right now how that's going to work out, but I would imagine in the next two years or so, it'll become clear. No shuttles, what happens then? Do we depend entirely upon the Russians? For transportation of astronauts, it will be dependent on the Russians for the foreseeable future. Uh, hopefully, we'll get a commercial sector, if you will, in the United States that will be able to bring astronauts up to the space station for us. However, for supplies, we use the, the HTV and the ATV. These are uh, an acronym, acronyms that don't really matter much, but uh, they're supply ships that get launched uh, from various countries around the world to resupply space station. Do you expect to see men on Mars in your lifetime? That's a great question. We were, in fact, some of us were just kicking this exact question around yesterday. You can now talk to someone that's 28 years old and realize or have them realize that in their lifetime no one has walked on the moon. So we were saying the question is will, will we be in a case where you can talk to a 60 year old person and have them realize that in their lifetime no one has walked on the moon? And I think the answer is potentially yes. Until we get some clear direction and some real goals as a nation or as a planet, humanity, to go in that direction. I'm not sure it's going to happen. I'm, I'm a little more optimistic. I think we're, we're, we're probably um, at one of the, the, the flattest spots yes. in space exploration that we've been for a long time because, you know, shuttle programs coming to an end and we've had this very versatile instrument. But one of the legacies of um, the whole space station project was a very good international consortium, yes. a partnership that came out of this. And I'm hoping that we can build on some of the strengths of the partnership to do something good in the future because I think the resources required to explore Mars will be more than just any one country. So I'm hoping yeah, that if I continue to live healthy, don't smoke, don't drink too much, that I will see uh, somebody land on Mars. I, th I hope that you see somebody land on Mars. I think it'd be tremendously well, I don't exciting think I thing will to see. Well, I must be one of the very few people who know or knew the first man on the moon, the first man in space, and the first airman, all they were right. Really? Those three could actually have met. They didn't, they could have done, their lives overlapped. Mm -hmm. I wonder what will happen next. Anyway, both of you two are certainly let your mark in history. I've been to space three times, and uh, the lasting impression you, know, you have is that I wish I could take everyone else I know with me. If I wasn't in my 88th year, I'd not have to join you. Never too late, man. Sign uh, up now. Possibly. <laughs> <laughs>
Congratulations to you both, and thank you indeed for coming here. It's been a great honour. I think the honour is all ours. It is. Thank you, Sir Patrick. Well, having the astronauts with us is great, but there's one